Search me, Lord. Search me, Lord. And the light from heaven on my soul. If you find anything that shouldn't be, take it out and strengthen me. I want to be right. I want to be whole. I want to be whole. Let's say it again. Search me, Lord. Search me, Lord. Search me, Lord. Search me, Lord. Turn the lights from heaven on my soul. If you find anything that shouldn't be, take it out and strengthen me. I want to be ready. I want to be saved. I want to be whole. Oh, search me, Lord. Search me, Lord. Search me, Lord. Search me, Lord. Oh, turn the lights from heaven on my soul. If you find anything that shouldn't be, take it out and strengthen me. I want to be right. I want to be saved. Lord, touch me, Jim King, through and through. Let's try to get in. You know when I'm right. You know when I'm wrong. You know where I'm going. And you know where I belong. Lord, you know all that I do. You know all of my secrets, too. Lord, search me, search me, Jesus, through and through. Well, search me, Lord, 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 search my mind, search me, Lord, search me, Lord, search me, Lord, search my heart. Search me, I said, search me, search me, Lord. I said, search me, do it through. Search me, Lord. Search me, search me, search your mind. Search me, search my heart. Search my heart. Search my heart. Give me love for my fellow man. Search me, Lord. Touch me, Lord. Touch me, Lord. Touch me, Lord. I need you. Oh, just touch me. I need you. Oh, just touch me. Through and through. Through and through. Through and through. Touch me, Lord. I need fiction. I need fiction. I need fiction. Fix my mind. Fix my mind. My walk. Touch me, Lord. 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 Touch my mind. Touch my mind. I need you. I can fix it. I need you.
search me. Oh, just search me. I need to win through. To win through. To win through. I search me. Oh, just search me. Oh, just search me. Search me. It is fine anything that shouldn't be.
read in your hearing, it says, praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with the stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. I'm going to say that again. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Now, praise ye the Lord. Come on, praise ye. We're going to get out of here. Hallelujah. But the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds and bringing into obedience everything. Making it subject to the will of Christ. Come on church, we're staying right here. Open up your mouth, throw your hands up, throw your head back, give God some praise in here. This is a praise Sunday. Let everything that hath breath Ye the Lord praise. Ye the Lord praise. We're going to praise some hell out of our life. We're going to praise some stuff into existence. What I've been waiting for, I'm going to praise him in advance. And what I need, God, I'm going to praise him for removing it. Let everything that hath breath. Hallelujah. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. This is the scripture. I'm here. I am here. My God from Zion. Evangelist Harvell started the song, Praise is what I do. Hey Amen. I believe we'll take that one and then we'll use that as a text. Praise is what I do. Somebody shout, Praise, praise. is what I do praise is what I do just give me a few minutes and we'll work this one we'll work this one my God y'all move out of your comfort zone I'm not the neighbor preacher but move out of your comfort zone find somebody and tell them praise is what I do come on praise is what I do Praise is what I do. We'll find out when you do it, but praise is what? It's what I do. Ladies and gentlemen, family of the greater apostolic assemblies of Christ have their seat. It is indeed an understatement to declare that we are living in our last days. We have been saying this for so long, uh -huh. but the imminent return of our Lord and Savior is closer now than when we were saying it years ago. Do I have a witness in here? Some of you have been saying the Lord is coming since you've been saved, and some of, some of you have been saved upwards of 40, 50 years, but hallelujah, we are closer now to the coming of the Lord than we have ever been. Amen. Uh, nevertheless, I believe that we uh, can all agree that during our time of waiting that uh, darkness has grown more uh, so across our society than it has in the past. I don't know about you, but there's a lot of stuff going on. And uh, if you take time and look around, I don't know if you pay attention to your news, but I've got this app on my phone that lets me know what's going on in the communities that I'm in. So if I'm at home, it gives me the latest news for being at home. If I'm here, it gives me the latest news for being here. If I'm there, it gives me the latest news for being there. And uh, 
One thing I've noticed, no matter where I go, there is always something going on that is the work of darkness. Do I have a witness here? Amen. There I was reading yesterday where a young man uh, thought someone broke into his house one morning and uh, uh, this was yesterday and uh, he and his wife had or his girlfriend, whichever one it was, he, he decided that he was going to grab his gun and find out who was in the home. And uh, when he was walking through his home, he, his wife deterred him to go another direction based upon a sound that they heard. And so he went to this room and opened up the closet and saw a silhouette of something someone in the closet and without thinking, without asking questions, the young man pulled the trigger and shot his eight year old daughter who was standing in the closet. Look here church, we are in a day and time where the devil is busy, but the church has to be busier. Now, amen, I, I was watching another newscast where someone had stolen a SUV, rammed the SUV into a tree, crashed it, totaled it out, tires went flying off of the vehicle, axles went flying off, both of the individuals that were in the vehicle were bleeding, yet they both decided to jump out of the total vehicle and run. One got caught in the field, blooded up by the police, and the other found another victim who was driving, a lady driving her car. He jumped inside of the car, grabbed the steering wheel. The woman jumped outside of the car and ran off, and this individual carried on with her car and ended up in an accident about 15 miles away from where he had stole that vehicle, and guess what still drove off after the accident and hasn't been caught yet church we are in a day where darkness is all around us amen we can declare that the coming of the Lord is now more imminent than it has ever been we have wars going on we have uh, pestilences we have hurricanes we have earthquakes in diverse places church we've got a lot going on and the works of darkness are prevalent within our society amen but I come to share all on this morning. Uh, amen. That we us pause for a moment uh, and I make this declaration that regardless of what we see transpire in the world as we know it today uh, that the foundation of God yet remains intact and uh, it standeth assured. Uh, the church of the living God has and will be uh, and continue to be victorious uh, amid the crisis that we have during uh, our whole holiness a journey. Amen. One thing that is of an assuring is that for many people, God's people in fact, is that the enemy has attempted to invade, distract, and even discourage the people of God. Amen. The enemy has used various tactics in efforts of thwarting and disrupting the will of God in our lives. Amen. Man, and within his disruptive plan, his attempts is to seek to cast darkness over our lives of the end of the lives of the individuals with whom we have to do. He is seeking to cast darkness and blind us to make us believe that there is no hope. But my Bible declares that if we have hope only in this life, we are of all men most miserable. Church, can I declare unto you that the enemy is trying to distract you from the purpose that God has in your life. He is trying to cast a shadow over you to make you believe that what you're going through and what you're in will never get any better. I'm almost done preaching here. Amen. But we must understand that in the midst of darkness that we are the children and the servants of God and therefore we are the servants of light however with servitude to God it requires more than simple mere lip service for I found out that talk is the cheapest thing that is on the market but your talk has to be followed up with action and fruit that identifies that your life is is measuring up uh, 
to the call of God that is on your life. For we are no longer children who are tossed to and fro, but we have become part of a royal priesthood, a chosen generation, a holy nation, a peculiar people that we should show forth the praise of him who has called us out of darkness into a marvelous light. Let me preach now. I know there are some of you in here. You didn't deserve for God to come to where you were. Yet he still came and found you when you were in your mess. There are some of you in here that if it would have been right, God would have left you to your own devices and have allowed the enemy to have swallowed you up while you were in your sin. Some of you had some bad mouths and some of you still do. Some of you had some nasty attitudes and some of you still do. Some of you you are what the Bible declares as whoremongers, adulterers, fornicators. You are idolatrous. The Bible declares that such were some of you. But I'm so glad to declare on today that after this moment that God stepped into my life and now I am washed. I am clean. I am sanctified and I am justified by the name of the Lord. If I could and I'm getting ready to go now but if I could travel and have some of you join me as I go down the memory lane you recall back over your life that if it had not been for God stepping in when he did you would have gave up and you would have lost your mind but God who is rich in his mercy wherewith he had loved us he has called us together to sit with him in heavenly places you didn't deserve that but God gave it to you I'm so glad that God didn't give me what I deserve but he gave me what I dinner or some of you in here glad about the mercy that God has extended unto you mercy is holding back the thing that you should have got when you were found in your mess the Lord stepped between you and the death angel and said hold up I'm going to give them another chance. Is there anybody in here that's bold enough, courageous enough to jump to your feet and be the one leper to come back and say, Lord, I'm so glad that you came when you did. I'm getting ready to go now, but I came to preach on the day to greater apostolic and tell you that even though darkness is all around us, even though it seems like hell is enlarging itself on the daily, you ought to be grateful that God didn't allow the enemy to do what he was gonna do. You ought to be grateful that God stepped in in the nick of time while you were out there trying to make up your mind while you were out there doing your own thing and not getting cold the time of day. It was God who sent grace to where you were and gave you what you did not even deserve. I wish I was preaching to the right folk that would believe and confess that if it wasn't for God coming when he 
did. I will still be in the street. I will still be fornicating. I will still be running around with the wrong crowd. I will still be in a place where I couldn't control my thoughts. But I'm so glad that all today God has rescued me from the pit of hell and of the snare of the fowler. I'm so glad that the psalmist who had been through so much hell, who had been through so much turmoil, decided to pin this scripture because it is indicative of who we are and it is indicative of what we do. Can I preach for about three minutes and tell you that honey, sometime when the darkness is over your life, you got to remember that if you got the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway, which means it don't matter how dark it is. It don't matter what it look like. That is God before me. He's more than the world against me. And because God cares so much for me, he came down, stepped between me and the accident, stepped between me and the bullet, stepped between me and the thief of my soul. I'm so glad and I owe God a praise. Let me go now. If you want to know how to overcome while you're in darkness, learn to give God some praise because praise is comely to the upright. If you're in a pickle, it don't matter. Is there anything too hard for my God? There is nothing. Brother Roy, I don't know if you're listening. I don't know if you hear me, but I feel the spirit of prophecy. I came to tell you, praise your way out of sickness. Praise your way into deliverance. Greater apostolic. I came to tell you one of the greatest weapons in your arsenal is pray when you praise God. He comes down when you praise God. He comes and says about you when you praise him. He calls to attention and the enemy and his darkness has to flee. So I care to encourage you in your trial, in your test. Give God a praise. Praise him when you come in. Praise him when you go out. Praise him on the string instrument and the organ. Praise him with the psaltery and with the heart. Praise him on the high sounding cymbal. Praise him on the low sounding cymbal. Which means when things are high and good, praise him. Don't wait till the battle is over. And when you're low and you get down there, find the low sounding symbol when it seems like you're in a moment of despair you're in a moment of weakness and you don't I'm preaching to somebody and you don't know what to do and you're low as you can go find the low sounding symbol but whatever you do wherever you are wherever you go don't lose 
your praise. Don't lose your praise. Don't lose your praise. Don't lose your anointing. Why? Because praise is what I do. So let everything that has breath, the birds will praise me. The crickets will praise me. The trees with oxygen will praise me. The doll, the cat, the cow, the goat, the lamb. But we are a chosen people. We are so great that the angel wrote and said, What is man that thou art mindful of him and the son of man that thou visitest him? Is there anybody in here? I'm going now. Is there anybody in here that got something that you're dealing with? That's bigger than you are. Let me see your hand. If you got something, you need God to deliver you out of. I got a few things on my plate that is bigger than I am. I can't handle it. I can't control it. I can't navigate. But God has given me the power, the fortitude to Praise him while things are in disarray because praise is what I do. Some of you, you wait for the praise leader to tell you to wave your hands when you ought to wave your hands just because he is God. Some of you wait on the preacher to tell you how to praise him. Well, honey, newsflash, I can't tell you how to praise him, but you got to learn how to adore him and appreciate him for yourself. Now let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. Praise your problem go. Praise your situation out. Praise your way through. Praise your way over. Praise your way out of it. Praise your way over it. Praise your way in it. Because if God allowed you to be in it, he's looking for glory. And he's looking for praise to come out of where you are. I'm going now. But I want to close here with the fact that if you have repented, of your sin and have been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and you've been filled with the Holy Ghost and you're living a life that is pleasing unto God you can ask what you will and you can praise him before the request has been fulfilled if you're in it being like me I see my package coming. I get so happy when I'm able to track my package through UPS. I look and I see it on left Kentucky and I made it to Nashville and then I track it. I'm getting excited now because the blessing is getting closer to where I am. It leaves Nashville and I see it done a ride in the Memphis. Can I tell you, greater apostolic, your package 
Rocket is in your brain. It's arrived in Springfield. It may not have made it to 1300 just yet, but you ought to get excited that your package is on the way. It's closer now than it's ever been. And because it's so close, I'm going to praise while it's coming to where I am. The Lord is saying, your package is on the way. It's left its previous place and is on its way to its destination. Don't wait till the package gets there. Praise him before the package makes it to 1300 so that when it gets there, you can have an explosive explosive praise because you were prepared for the delivery church praise is what we do praise is what we do when you're down put on some good music go into prayer call upon the name of the Lord Learn to have a praise party with nobody else around. Some people can't praise them until they come to church. But true praisers learn to praise them before they get to church. Because they realize that their package has arrived. They praise them before they get in the door because they got the notification package has been delivered. Package has been delivered. And so we get happy by the time we get to church, we come in looking for our package of deliverance because praise is what we... Yes. You mean to tell me I'm getting ready to lose everything and you want me to pray? Honey, did you not read the Bible? Let everything get lost. God will give you more than what you had if you wait on him because your package has been delivered. So don't wait till you get there. Praise him on your way. And when you get there, give him a Shabbat. Don't wait till you, your package, you've got the notification. It's already delivered. Praise. Some of y'all jump to your feet and say, my package has been delivered. Lift your hands and say, my package has been delivered. If you believe it, if you believe it, if you believe, see, sometimes you got to trust in what you can't see. Some trust in chariots. Some trust in kings. But I will trust in the name of the Lord. And the name of the Lord sent me a notification to say, package delivered. Now praise me before you get the package and open it up. Bishop, I heard what you was going through. How can you still smile? Because I got a hope, honey. And my hope told me that there's a package waiting for me at the end of the race. I ain't got to run fast to get to it. I ain't got to be swift to get to it. All I got to do is run the race with patience. Looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of my faith. Because the race is not given to the swift, nor the battle to the strong. But 
baby, all I got to do is endure until I get to the house of God. And my package will be there waiting for me. So I'm going to praise him for my Some of y'all got a package you need to praise him in advance for. Because praise is what I I'm getting ready to go. Just a little bit, just a little bit. Keep me there. And then there's sometimes, some of you know about this. Sometimes you get a mystery package. Sometimes you get a mystery package. You didn't even know it was coming. Nobody said nothing to you. But all of a sudden, because your address is tied to heaven, because your address is tied to heaven, heaven sends you a notification to let you know that a package is on the way. Heaven sends you a notification to let you know a package is on the way. Now you're really excited. What is this? What is this package all about? Where did it come from? Who sent A mystery package. And when you open it up, it says blessings on top of blessings. On top of blessings, on top of blessings, on top. Come on, 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 come on. Come on. Hallelujah. 